Uh, gentlelady from uh, Georgia, Ms. McKinney. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, I watched President Bush deliver a moving speech at the United Nations in September 2003 in which he, mission, he mentioned the crisis of the sex trade. The President called for the punishment of those involved in this horrible business. But at the very moment of that speech, DynCor was exposed for having been involved in the buying and selling of young women and children. While all of this was going on, DynCor kept the Pentagon contract to administer the smallpox and anthrax vaccine and is now working on a plague vaccine through the Joint Vaccine Acquisition Program. Mr. Secretary, is it policy of the U.S. government to reward companies that traffic in women and little girls? That's my first question. My second question, Correct. Mr. Secretary, according to the Comptroller General of the United States, there are serious financial pro management problems at the Pentagon, to which Mr. Cooper alluded. Fiscal year 1999, 2.3 trillion missing. Fiscal year 2000, 1.1 trillion missing. And DOD is the number one reason why the government can't balance its checkbook. The Pentagon has claimed year after year that the reason it can't account for the money is because its computers don't communicate with each other. My second question, Mr. Secretary, is who has the contracts today to make those systems communicate with each other? How long have they had those contracts? And how much have the taxpayers paid for them? Finally, Mr. Secretary, after the last hearing, I thought that my office was promised a written response to my question regarding the four war games on September 11th. I have not yet received that re response, but would like for you to respond to the questions that I've put to you today. And then I do expect the written response to my previous question, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Representative. First, the answer to your first question is, is no, absolutely not. The policy of the United States government is uh, clear, unambiguous, and opposed to, uh, to the activities that you described. The um, second question. Well, how do you explain the fact that um, DynCorp and its successor uh, companies have received and continue to receive government contracts? I would have to go and, and find the facts, but there are laws and rules and regulations with respect to government contracts, and there are times that corporations do things they should not do, in which case they tend to be suspended for some period. There are times then that, that the under the laws and the rules and regulations for the that uh, passed by the Congress and implemented by the executive branch, that corporations can get off of the pen, out of the penalty box, if you will, and and be permitted to engage in contracts with the government. They're they're not generally not barred in perpetuity. This contract, this company um, was never in the penalty box. If you could proceed to my second question, please. The um, the second Who question. Uh, I've forgotten what the second question was. I think Ms. Jonas knows it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McKinney. I appreciate the question. I appreciate your interest in uh, our department's financial uh, condition, and uh, we are working very hard on that program. I've just come back uh, recently. This I week. understand that you're working hard on it, yes. but my question was, who has the contract? How long has that, have it, they had that contract, there are, and how much money have we spent on it? In general, we spend about $20 billion in the Department on Information Technology Systems. Uh, the, uh, the accounting uh, systems are part of that. I can get you the exact number for the record of what we spend on our current, what we call legacy systems, uh, and those that we're moving toward. And who has the contracts? Uh, that, that would be a multitude of uh, individuals. Could you have. name some, please? Uh, well, I think off the top of the, uh, my head, well, I would rather not. I'd rather provide well, that for the record. That's not privileged information, is it? I'm sure it's not. Well, please. Yeah. And I, we still have time, so please. I would be glad to provide for the record. I don't want to talk from the top of my head and be incorrect. The, um, on your first question, I'm advised by Dr. Chu that it was not the corporation that was engaged in the activities you characterized, but I'm told it was an employee of the corporation. And uh, it was some years ago in the Balkans that that took place. 
It's my understanding that that continues to take place. And is that, that right? Yes. Well, if you can I'm, give me information to that I'm effect, I'm sure you we are interested in all of the information that I have, and I'll be more than happy to provide it to Good. you. Good. Thank you. But I would also like to get information from you. Okay. For example, the information We're, that I just requested about who has those contracts. Certainly. Let me uh, assure the gentlelady that uh, we'll make sure that this uh, in exchange of information takes place. And, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, if you can get back with us on the dying core uh, we, we uh, story, uh, we'll uh, get that to the gentlelady. We'll get Thank back. you, Mr. Chairman. We'll get back on both of the first two questions, but uh, the, the Congresswoman has raised the other question twice now, and I'd like to have General Myers respond because you, you mentioned it in the last hearing, and I think it would be helpful to get the answer, even though okay. we're on red, if okay. you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Myers, go right ahead. But I would like to have the answer in writing as well, as I thought my office was promised. Okay. I don't know about the promise, uh, uh, Congresswoman, but could you repeat the question to make sure I'm answering the right question? This is 9-11 question. The question was, we had four war games going on on September 11th, and the question that I tried to pose before the uh, secretary had to go to lunch was um, whether or not the activities of the four war games going on on September 11th actually impaired our ability to, to respond to the attacks. Uh, the answer to the question is no, did not impair our response. In fact, uh, General Eberhardt, who was in the commander of North American Aerospace Defense Command, as he testified in front of the 9-11 Commission, I believe, I believe he told them that it enhanced our ability to respond given that NORAD didn't have the overall responsibility for responding to the attacks today. That was uh, an FAA responsibility. But they were, uh, they were two CPXs. There was one Department of Justice exercise that didn't have anything to do with the, the other three. And there was an actual operation ongoing because there was some Russian bomber activity up near Alaska. So we Let me ask you this then. Who was in charge of managing those war games? And, uh, and General, uh, why don't you give the uh, give the best answer you can here in a short period of time, and we'll uh, the general lady wants to get a written answer anyway, and then we can move on. Uh, the to important other thing folks. is to realize is in North American Aerospace Defense Command was responsible. Uh, these are uh, command post exercises. What that means is all the battle positions that uh, are normally not filled are indeed filled. So it was an easy transition from an exercise into a real-world situation, actually enhanced the, the response. Otherwise, it would take somewhere between 30 minutes and a couple of hours to fill those positions, those battle spaces, with the, the, the right staff officers. Mr. Chairman, begging your indulgence, was September 11th declared a National Security Special Event Day? I have to look back. I do not know. You mean after the fact or before the No, fact? because of the activities going on that had been scheduled at the United Nations that day. I'd have to go back and check. I don't know. Thank you. Okay. I thank the gentlelady. The uh, the chair uh, would ask the gentleman.